But this morning we are here and I am going to minister uh, a little bit on, on moms. We do want to acknowledge moms. If you guys have, have your Bibles, turn to the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians. We're going to read chapter 5, uh, verse 18. I think this morning that this message, uh, intentionally what I've done is I do want to acknowledge moms. But at the same time, I, I do want to minister to everybody here. And, and, I, and I acknowledge this morning as we celebrate moms, not everybody here is a mom. Right? There's some of us, I'm not a mom. <laughs> and proud of it. <laughs> Praise God. So some of us, we're not moms. But you know something that we all do have in common? Is that we all have a mother. Every one of us, we have a mom. So I truly believe that this message is, gonna, is really going to speak to us, to, you know, as, as a whole, as a church, as we celebrate this day. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, if you guys have your Bibles, turn with me there, or it, they'll put it up on the screen so that you can read along. It says, give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you this morning, God, in Jesus' name. God, this morning we pray for your presence. We pray, let your will take place here in our midst. God, you know every person that's here. God, I pray, God, that where we're at, you would speak into our lives. As we celebrate mothers, as we celebrate, Lord God, everything they do, Lord God, I pray this morning, God, be God, be Lord, and do as you please. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Well, you know, as we, as we come together and, and we celebrate this day, uh, as I was kind of going through this and kind of putting this together, I come to an understanding this morning that Mother's Day is not primarily about being a mother and receiving honor. Mother's Day is about, it's about giving thanks to God for having a mother. So again, as we come together and we celebrate this day and we understand that, that not everybody here is, is a mom, but yet, what we do all have in common is that every one of us, we all have a mom. You know, this morning, whether your mom has, has, has passed on or, or maybe you grew up and you, you, you didn't know your mom, the fact that you're here reveals that somebody gave birth to you and you have a mother. And for that this morning, every one of us, as we celebrate Mother's Day, we have a reason to be thankful. How many agree with me so far, thus far? Some of you guys haven't, not, not really quite there yet. Mothers this morning are a tremendous gift from God. And again, every one of us has one. So Mother's Day is really a holiday for everyone. It's a day that we can come and we can be thankful towards God for giving every one of us a mom. And at the same time, it also serves as a day for letting that, that gratitude play itself out in, in, in a tangible expression of special honor towards your mom. So as we celebrate this day, we're, we're thankful towards God that God has given us a mom. But how many know there's nothing wrong with going and buying your mom something that's tangible? Any moms in the house? <laughs> Any moms want to get a gift? <laughs> tangible. It means you can touch, you can feel. Amen. You know, you, you ever, you ever, you ever uh, as a guy, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm relating as a guy, you ever help somebody out? Like, you know, they might need work at their house. They might need uh, work on their car. You know, they might need you to go somewhere with them. And, and you go with them and they say, they say to you, thank you. And it feels good huh, when someone thanks you, thanks you, right? Does it feel good when someone gives, says, says thanks? But, man, it, it's feel, as good as it feels, it's like, it's like they say thank you and you're like trying to, <laughs> Right? 
You ever go to somebody's house and, and you work hard, whether you're helping them work in their car or their house or, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm bad when it comes to computers. So sometimes I have people come and help me out with computers. Isn't it awesome when you go to somebody's house and you help them out and, and man, they buy pizza or, or they buy some food or they have a, a Mino, Mino barbecue, some carne asada, some ribs, some, right, or they smoke uh, uh, so a ham or what, what do you normally smoke? I don't know what you smoke, amen, but, it, but it's food, right, and you eat it. I don't know what it is. I know you just put it in a taco and it goes down and it's good, right? And it's tangible, right? There's nothing wrong. I don't want nobody to go. I thought about it at the end of first service. I go, man, everybody's going to go home. And they're going to talk to their mom and say, mom, uh, uh, Mother's Day is not about you. It's about thanking God. That's what Pastor Mike said, right? And it is. It's about thanking God. But there's nothing wrong with showing your mom some honor. And as you thank her, give her something that's tangible this morning. Amen? I'm glad this morning that there's still a day in our society that, that we separate to be able to acknowledge and, and honor our moms. The Bible sadly announces in Proverbs, there is a generation that curses its father and does not bless its mother. Now we understand this morning that Moms ain't perfect. Some of you guys don't believe me. Moms ain't perfect. But the truth is that every single one of us should be thankful for the one that went through the struggle, the battle, labor of giving birth to us. Right? Your mom might not be perfect. But we should be thankful towards God that there was someone there that went. And I don't know if anybody's ever been in a, in a, in a room when a woman's giving labor. I've been there with all my kids. And, and two of my daughters actually allowed me to be inside. They wanted me to be inside while they were giving birth to my grandchildren. And that was pretty crazy. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. My wife, like, sat me in a certain area. Obviously, you're in there. You don't want to see everything, right? But yet you do want to be in there and see it. It was, it was, it was amazing. But have you ever been there while your wife is giving birth or, you know, uh, your si what, whatever the situation, and you see the pain? Woo! How many here like pain? <laughs> you know, I don't know about you guys, man, but when I go to the dentist, you know, how, how many have been to the dentist? They give you that shot, right? And it's so that, you, you know, they, they, they go in there and they rub you and they give you the shot. And what do they do? They walk away for a couple minutes and then they kind of come back. Every time they come back, you know what I tell them? I go, give me another shot. I don't want to feel no pain. But you don't know, I'll bite you. If I feel any pain, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bite you. Give me another shot. I don't care how much it costs. I got insurance. Bill them. Hey, man, give me another shot. Right? If you're here this morning, somebody went through that pain, that labor pain, to give birth to you and me. Every one of us here this morning, we might not be a mom, but we all do have in common is we all have a mother. And this morning, for that reason, we should be thankful. Amen? Proverbs chapter 31, verse 28 says, Our sons rise up and call her blessed. Her sons rise up and call her blessed. Now, I do realize that in a group like this this morning, Many of us, we come from different backgrounds. We have diff different upbringings. And some of us here this morning, you might, man, you know, you can't wait till after service. You're going to go hang out with your mom, and you had a great mom. You had a great upbringing. But yet, with a crowd like this, some of us, maybe we grew up without a mom. Maybe this morning, your, your mom's no longer around. So this morning, you might be thinking to yourself, why be thankful? Why be thankful? What good is it going to do? Pastor, you don't know the pain. You don't, you don't know what I've been through. As a matter of fact, this day just kind, kind of reminds me of all the hurt and all the pain, all the lack of. Our text says, give thanks in everything. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 
You know, it's so crazy that as a new believer, when I first got saved, reading passages like this, I would always question why. Why? Who wrote this? These individuals must not have bills. I mean, sometimes when you ain't got money to pay bills, it's hard to give thanks in everything. When things ain't working out the way you want them to, it's hard to give thanks in everything. As we celebrate Mother's Day, some of us were having a hard time trying to understand how can we give thanks in everything. So this morning, the question that you might be thinking to yourself is, Pastor, why? Why be thankful? We know it's so crazy. There's, there's so much out there on, on, the, on the good of being an individual that's grateful, an individual that's, that's thankful. And so first, the first reason, being grateful makes you happier and healthier. Can, did you know that? Being grateful makes you happier and healthier. How many want to be happy? Just reminded me of a song. Some of you guys know it. I'm not going to go there because I jack it up all the time. <laughs> I want it so bad to say it, but I'm not. <clears throat> self-control, self-control. Being grateful makes you happy. You guys ever heard that song, Be Happy? <sighs> Can any of you guys sing it? Okay, one of you guys sing it. Sing it. Oh, because I'm happy. Oh, because I'm happy. Right? There you guys go. Some of you guys don't. I, I don't I'm, I'm not good with songs. I'm good with beats. I don't remember lyrics, so I just make my own lyrics up. In the church, they have a great time with me making up my own lyrics, and I just kind of just go for it. I've done that since I was a kid. Right? Being grateful makes you happier and it makes you healthier. We live in a time where everybody wants to be healthy, right? Listen, being grateful makes you happier and healthier. We've, we've all, how many, how many heard the saying, count your, count your blessings? Anybody? Raise your hand if you've heard that saying before. Count your blessings. Now, did you, literally, it's, it's true. Counting your blessings increases your health. It increases you being an individual that's, that's much happier. Now, what's crazy, and I, I was blown away in, in putting this sermon together. I never thought of going in this direction. But the, the secular world, some of the information that I got for this passage, doesn't even come from a christian base study. It, it, come from, it comes from the secular world. The world's leading expert, well, he's known as the expert on gratitude. His name is Dr. Robert Emmons, a professor of psychology at the University of California, Davis, in a 2003 study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, Dr. Emmons and his colleague Michael from the University of Miami examined the effects of writing gratitude diaries on almost 200 college students. They separated these students into three different groups. They had one group of students write for 20 minutes each day about things that they were grateful for. The second group wrote about things that they were angry about. And the third group wrote about random topics like the color of their shirt, the color of their shoes, so forth and so on. Now this morning, guess which group was happiest at the end of the whole experiment? The ones who wrote about things that they were grateful for. Even more interesting this morning is that those that wrote about things that they were grateful for were less likely to be sick throughout the semester. This is a secular study. This isn't Christian base. So you see this morning being grateful, this mo it's, 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 it's proven that it makes you happier and it makes you healthier. Listen to me this morning as a Christian, 
being grateful is going to make you healthier. It's going to make you happier. This is why we see that the Bible teaches us in our text, and even a couple of verses before our text, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, Paul tells us, listen, rejoice always. Rejoice always. You see, sometimes as Christians, we're like, wait a minute, how can you rejoice? There's a secret here. Rejoice always. Pray constantly. I know what you, oh no, he's going to go there. We're going to say that. That's a different message. Rejoice always. Verse 18, give thanks in everything for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You see this morning, God wants you and I. I mean, you sometimes we think that, man, God has got it out for us, right? Man, it seems like no matter what happens, no matter what I do, the more I try to serve God or, or try to do this, things just seem to go bad for us. Listen, the secret is not on what you have. It's not on what you own. It's not on how much money you make. It's not what kind of career you have. It's not the wife or the husband or what side of the tracks you live in. The secret is found in being grateful. Being grateful. If you and I would just learn as Christians to be grateful, we will be happier. Again, I forget lyrics quick, guys. (laughs) Because because I'm happy, right? (laughs) Not just a song you sing. Being grateful makes you a happier father. I was looking at a picture that I have of my kids in in the office, and I wish I could hit replay. Any dad here? It's Mother. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Mother's Day. <laughs> Can I lie a little bit? My wife was looking at a picture. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Don't you guys ever make mistakes as parents because you weren't happy? What was what was it that wasn't making us happy? The bills. The lack of. If we would just be grateful in everything, it's a proven fact that you're going to be a happier person. You're going to be a healthier individual. You know, I get a, I get a kick. You ever, you know, how many know that, how many believe God is a, a big God? God is a huge God, right? You ever see Chris, you, you, you ever see someone that sucks on lemons? You ever suck on a lemon yourself? I can't, I, I'm not a lemony type of person. Even like, I really don't drink lemony because if, I, if it's too much lemon, like if I drink it right away, it's like, and I don't know, I do things with my face that I can't normally do them. Like, they're like, Arr, like the exorcist was there. Arr, you know, because, and you ever seen Christians like that? You, you, anybody ever seen a Christian like that? God is good. God is awesome. He created the heavens and the earth, but just. (laughs) Being grateful. You're here this morning. We're celebrating Mother's Day. I don't know everything that's taking place, but I know that if you're here, you're alive. And I know there was a mother who gave birth to you. And because she gave birth to you, you have an opportunity to make things right. You have the opportunity to marry someday. You have the opportunity to raise a family someday. As a mom or as a father, you have an opportunity to make it right. Why? Because your mother gave birth to you. Regardless of what took place, there is a reason you and I this morning can be grateful. And as we exercise being grateful this morning, the promise is you and I are going to be healthier and we're going to be happier. 
And let me tell you, when you're a happier person, everybody around you is happy. I say, when you're, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very, I like to be transparent. When I, was, when I was younger and I was raising my kid, I wasn't too happy. I used to be a mean dad, man. And, and you know, now, you know what, what blows me away is I never realized that my kids were going to grow up and come over my house and say all these stories, and they're always going to be about me, and I was going to be always the villain. I was going to be like the bad guy in all these stories, and they're all laughing. I'm like in the side like, <laughs> talking about me. And I look, and I wish, and listen, maybe you're, you're here and you're a young mom. You, it's not about Father's Day or anything like that, but again, I'm going to throw dads in there. <laughs> be grateful. You're going to be a much happier person, and those around you are going to be much happier. And you're going to be much, much healthier. Second reason, being grateful helps you see more blessings. Being grateful helps you see more blessings. So the first reason that it's important to be grateful is you're going to be happier and you're going to be healthier. Second reason is being grateful helps you see more blessings. You see, I truly believe there's a lot of blessings in our lives. This morning I have an example. If you guys can post a picture, amen. I was going to say, why they threw me for a loop? They put us a different picture. This is the right picture right here. Isn't that, a, isn't that a beautiful picture? No, I guess no. You guys don't like that one? Okay. What's this? Notice the, the black flowers. They catch your attention now? You guys have focused on the black flowers? Life is like that. Life is really beautiful and full of blessings. But in life, sometimes there's black flowers. Now, I'm not against black flowers. I'm just using it as an analogy right now. So just flow along with me. Life sometimes has some bad situations. And the more we focus on the bad situations, the more you focus on those black flowers, the more they begin to just overtake the entire picture. And before you know it, you can no longer see the sky. You didn't even know there was a sky there. You no longer see the clouds. You no longer see that some red ones in there, man. You don't see that the red and the black with the sky, the good and the back actually makes one heck of a beautiful picture. Because we just get consumed by the negative in our lives. Being grateful, I'm grateful for the blue sky, man. It's a beautiful day. You start focusing on that sky, you forget those black flowers are there. You start focusing on the red ones. You start focusing on the green. You start focusing on the entire picture, and you're like, wow. You forget the negative. The negative actually adds to all the beautiful. Being grateful opens up the door to more blessings. When you and I look for blessings, we look for something from the outside to come in. What I mean by that is like, it's like, it's like I'm, I'm driving my, 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 my 1999 Honda. I want a blessing. I want a two, 2018 Beamer, Right? You see somebody show up to church in a 2008 Beamer, man, that brother's blessed, right? Oh, come on, come on, be honest. It's Mother's Day. <laughs> We're always looking for something from the outside to come something on the inside, but this is what I'm talking about. The more grateful we are, the more blessed we are because of things that are already there. The sky was always there. The color the red, the green, was always there. Being an individual that's grateful opens up the doors to more blessings. Uh, Forbes magazine, 
You might know the magazine. They published an article titled Seven Scientifically Proven Benefits of Gratitude that will motivate you to give thanks year-round. And again, this isn't Christian-based. This isn't Bible-based. This is out in the secular world. And they're catching on to something, an understanding of being an individual that's grateful. They say gratitude opens a door to your relationships. This is not new relationships. This is your existing relationships. Being grateful opens up the door to your relationship. Imagine this morning, if you would just be grateful for your mom, how much better relationship you could have with her. Gratitude improves physical health. Gratitude improves uh, uh, it, it, grateful people sleep better. Grateful people. There's, there's, there's seven scientific things that he lists. Being grateful opens up the door to more blessings in our life. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 5 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Rejoice in the Lord always, he says. This is an amazing passage, folks. This is an amazing. Here's Paul. And it's hard to write this. It's, I mean, you know, in church it's so easy to amen it, but it's truly in life. How many here, by showing up hands, you've living life? How many know life sometimes throws some, some crazy curveballs at you? And he says, listen, rejoice in the Lord always as a new Christian. I mean, like, how, what, how, what does he mean by this? Because sometimes there's things that take place in life, and it's, and it's hard to rejoice. Paul writes this. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Do you know where Paul's at when he's writing this? He's in prison. He ain't at Disneyland. It'd be easy to write this while I'm in Disneyland and somebody else paid for me to be there. Rejoice in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice. Or someone takes you out to eat, woo, and they're picking up the tab. Rejoice in the Lord. He's in prison. Don't raise your hand, but some of us, you, we've been in prison. We've been in jail. And we deserve to be there. You know why he was in jail? Basically, because he was serving God. Can you imagine with me this morning, at the end of this service, police show up at the door? Where's Miguel Perez? Some of you guys don't know my legal name is Miguel. Now you know. You can look me up now. <laughs> You're under arrest. What have I done wrong? You preached the gospel. You Now I'm in jail. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, can I be honest with you guys? I ain't going to write you guys a letter saying rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, I'm going to say, bail me out, church. I don't care. Do a second offering, a love offering. I don't care. Bail me out. I need to get out. I'm going through some trials. The enemy's against me. Yet he says, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice always. In his circumstances, his rejoicing. See, we learn to rejoice. Our prison can become a paradise. If we don't learn to rejoice, our paradise can become a prison. Lastly, the third reason, there's, there's consequences. And in gratitude. When people are not grateful, they tend to complain. Are you the type of person that's complaining all the time? Why are they singing that song? Why is he preaching that message? Why is so and so wearing this? Why is my why is my mom? In Numbers chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now the people began complaining openly before the Lord. And it says, when the Lord, when the Lord heard, 
his anger burned. Being ungrateful. Get a load at this. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. It says, for they knew God. Now here, listen. Romans chapter 1 is giving us some insight on what took place back in Genesis. In Genesis chapter 3, I believe, we read of the fall of man. And if you're anything like me, I thought the fall of man was because they ate, the, you know, it's Mother's Day, I'm sorry, but Eve ate the apple. And then she told her husband, hey, honey, you want an apple? Right? That's me. That's my interpretation. But you see, we get into Romans and he gives us some insight of what took place back in the back. He says, for they knew God. For they, they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God or show gratitude. Can you imagine if ingratitude can cause the fall of man? Can you imagine... What ingratitude, not being grateful, not being thankful can do to an individual. Can you imagine what it can do to you? Can you imagine what it could do to this day as we celebrate moms? Imagine what it could do to your relationship between you and your mom. Imagine what ingratitude can do to your family. Can you imagine what it could do to, to a church? It caused the fall of mankind. The children of Israel, they don't get that first generation. They wander in the desert for over for 40 years, and that first generation never gets to see the promised land because they complained. Can you imagine that? I mean, I've never seen hamburgers and hot dogs and burritos fall from the sky. And, and I don't know what you want to interpret manna, but that's what I, I mean. I see burritos coming down from the sky. It fed them. It took care of them. Anybody ever buy new shoes? And Doesn't it seem like when you buy new shoes, everybody's out to get you? Doesn't it seem that way? Like, oh, hey, Pastor Nick, buy new shoes, guys. Come on, let's get them. Doesn't it seem that way? Their shoes lasted. Can you imagine their shoes never got scuffed? Water coming out of a... God took care of them. Have you ever thought to yourself, man, if, if, if I would get to see manna come from the sky, I would never complain. If I seen the, 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 the Red Sea split and, 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 and walk through... I, I would never complain. And I said this before, I wonder what the next generation, as they read about us and are complaining, what they will say. Man, if God healed my marriage that way, I would never complain. If God set me free of all that junk, I would never complain. If I could worship God in freedom, in a country, in a state like that, I would never complain. Can you imagine what they will say about us? Ingratitude can destroy you. It'll blind you from the blessing, from all the it'll blind you from all the wonderful things that God has for you. This morning, as we celebrate Mother's Day, it'll cause you to be sour towards your mom. It'll cause you to have bitterness. It'll cause you to cultivate. You guys know what cultivate means? Anybody ever, you, you grow a garden and you cultivate. You know, so many of us, you know what we're doing? We're cultivating the pain and the hurt. Ingratitude cultivates the pain and the hurt 
over and over and over again this morning as we celebrate mothers. Let's be thankful. I said, let's be thankful. Let's be thankful, man. Let's be thankful. Maybe you're going home and you're going to hang out with your family. Show up, man. Be, start practicing, man. I'm thankful. You know, I started putting this message together, and yesterday I was thinking about certain things that I'm going through, and I started, man, I'm thankful. Look at this house. Look at my wife. My kids are alive, man. I'm thankful. I got grandkids. They call me Papa Mike. I'm thankful. I got a car. I can drive. I'm thankful. I told my wife, here, baby, take the card. Go get yourself a dress. It's Mother's Day. I was able to do that. I'm thankful. I'm thankful this morning I got up. It was 4 o'clock in the morning. I didn't want to, but I got up, and I was able to breathe in. I'm thankful. Why? Be thankful because you'll be happier. Now you'll be able to show up and be happy. Because I'm, come on, sing it, come on. <laughs> right? You'll be healthier, man. You know what? You know what's so crazy? When I started learning, just be happy, man. Don't stress out about, man, my high blood pressure is not as bad no more. I've been dealing with blood pressures. I was in my 20s, man. I couldn't go to the that's my, I couldn't go to the I couldn't go to the doctor because they 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 admit me to the hospital like man what's what's wrong man what's going on it's like dude you're gonna have a, I want to be healthy having an attitude of gratitude will cause you to begin to see the blessings that are right there it's, they've been there all along they've been there all along man 